Hey guys, it's Alex from RoofTentInsider.com and this video is going to be all about how you're going to buy the perfect rooftop tent. Uh, so this will just be the ultimate buyer's guide. Uh, I've spent hours and hours just doing my own research, looking through uh, all of the rooftop tents, talking to other owners, um, and this is what I've come up to be uh, with the perfect tent, depending on the price, uh, size, and many other different factors. So if you're looking to save yourself a lot of time and get a good unbiased recommendation, that's what this video is all about. So with that said, let's jump right into it. First thing we're gonna be talking about is just uh, general features that you need to consider um, when looking at rooftop tents. Uh, first is how do you want the setup process to be? Do you care if it takes a little bit longer? Are you looking for it to be super snappy and maybe only a 60 to a 90 second process? Um, that's definitely a consideration that you're gonna to need to make. Um, and certain rooftop tents can vary all the way up to 10 minutes uh, in setup time. So if that's something you care about, um, definitely look into that. Next, we're talking size. Uh, this just really depends on your situation. I know for myself, it's just me, my girlfriend, and our puppy um, that we like to bring along on camping trips. But you know, other people have larger families um so it really just depends if you go solo it really doesn't matter you can get the smallest rooftop tent and be plenty comfortable um, but that is definitely something that you need to consider uh, next obviously is price i think this is probably the biggest thing for everybody um, people know that you know rooftop tents aren't cheap they range anywhere from 900 to four or five thousand dollars maybe um, so it's important to come into um, the buying process with a budget in mind and then from there you can really narrow it down The next thing you need to look at is the weight of the tent uh, This is for a couple of reasons But primarily you need to make sure that the rack system that you're gonna be putting the tent on can hold it as well as The roof of your vehicle has the proper weight limits um, in line uh, So there's a couple things to look at here. The first is the dynamic weight limit, which is simply how much the roof rack and your vehicle's roof can hold while the vehicle is in motion. Um, so for an example, I have the Yakima core bars, um, the crossbar system that is, and I believe the dynamic weight limit for that is 165 pounds. So in my case, I would need to get a rooftop tent that is 165 pounds or less and not exceed that weight limit. Now, the other thing you look at is the static weight limit, which is when the vehicle is not moving. Uh, and this is usually much higher. You're looking at like six to 700 pounds typically. Um, so you really don't have to worry about it. Um, the one thing to consider is most rooftop tents, uh, the load limit um, or the weight capacity rather is about 200 pounds per camper. Um, so if you're looking at a three person tent, you're usually gonna have a 600 pound weight limit. So that's just something to consider when you're looking at rooftop tents. Um, some vary much more than others. Some are more sturdy if they implement a honeycomb design. Um, but in general, that's something you definitely need to consider before you buy one. Uh, next is the vehicle. And this is a big consideration because if you have probably like a, a hatchback or even a sedan, your options are gonna be very, very limited. But nonetheless, you're still gonna be able to get a rooftop tent. Uh, I will caution you that it's probably gonna only be a two person tent and it needs to be around 100 pounds. Um, just because those vehicles really aren't made for that type of uh, added weight onto the car. Um, but another thing you can do is if you have a, like an SUV, a truck, uh, a full-size SUV, your options are pretty much unlimited here. The only thing you need to worry about is having a roof rack that can handle all of that weight because now you're looking at you know 125, 150, 200 pound tents. Um, but the vehicles can handle it. It's just as long as the rack can handle it, you'll be in good order. Uh, another thing to look at is the ladder. And this might be uh, something that you're like, you know, why would that be something I care about? But really it is. Uh, so you have two types of ladders is one. The first one is a sliding ladder. Um, so it just has sliding tracks. And then there's pre-drilled holes where you have to fit these little knobs into. Um, it can kind of be a pain and you have to get the setting just right. And then after a few uses, dirt will build up into those tracks. So it'll be kind of a pain to get in and out, um, open up the, the ladder that is. And it's just, it's really, they're not preferred by a lot of campers. Um, but what now we're seeing is a lot more of the telescope ladder being implemented. Um, and it's almost become a standard at this point to have a telescoping ladder. Uh, they, sh they shrink a lot more in size, so it'll be super compact. 
and then you know the name justifies what it does it literally just telescopes um, and you don't have to fit it into these pre-drilled holes and you know they're super long and just really easy and high quality uh, the next thing you want to consider is if you want an annex or not so some rooftop tents come with an annex included in the price and I'll actually throw a link in the description below for an article I wrote on about that particularly um, but an annex is super nice if you need a changing room uh, a dining area a place for your dog to sleep if you can't carry him, him or her up there um, and they're just really really nice to have especially if you're a larger family you can fit you know a blow-up mattress down there and have two three four maybe even five extra people depending how big the annex is so this is a great way to camp in a rooftop tent with large parties another spec you're going to want to look at is the tent fabric this matters for a couple of reasons you know most rooftop tents are waterproof uh, but another important thing is breathability so the higher quality fabric will allow air to ventilate in and out and this is really really useful so you don't see that condensation build up on your tent which can cause all sorts of problems. Obviously you don't wanna get wet in the middle of the night, but more so if your tent gets damp and you pack it up when you get home, you're gonna to have to unpack it, let it air out, and it can just be a process, especially if you live in a place like I do uh, in the Pacific Northwest where it rains constantly. So odds are when I come home, it's still gonna be raining and I'm gonna to have to take it off and put it in the garage and let it air out. And it's just gonna become a whole process that I really don't wanna deal with. Uh, the other thing is, the strength uh, of the fabric so you're just going to look at the thickness of it uh, i would say a general th um, baseline is about 260 grams uh, and then you'll see some go up to 280 and then if you're looking at like a winter tent it, you're probably going to be talking 360 grams um, so you can compare this easily and if you just look at the specs when you're buying uh, more times than not it will be listed and talked about um, in the features. So now that we've covered just some general features I would consider when buying a rooftop tent, you then need to decide if you want to buy a hard shell or a soft shell rooftop tent. Uh, and this can be kind of tough for some people, but I would break it down into just a few very important reasons um, to buy either of these tents. So first is durability. Uh, hard shells are just far more durable because of the shell itself. You're not gonna have that PVC cover that is on a soft shell. Um, and really the only wear and tear you're gonna see possibly is just um, some fading on the, the coloring from the sun. Um, but the seal on that tent is super tight, so you're not gonna get debris or anything like that in there. And just overall, they're gonna last you a long, long time. Uh, next is the level of comfort. So hard shells usually cost more money, and with that comes with usually premium materials. Uh, so you're looking at a thicker mattress, and this is just in part because of the design of the tent. Um, it, you know they can shut a hard shell that is can shut and be as slim as seven inches thick while still having a two and a half three inch or even a three and a half thin thick mattress uh, whereas a soft shell when they fold up that size doubles uh, so they try to stick to a little bit of a thinner mattress just so there doesn't look like a absolute brick sitting on top of your tent um, so that is something to kind of consider between a hard shell or a soft shell um, kind of playing into that is the styles and designs so with the soft shell, you're really just looking at a fold out design. There's not a lot of play there. Um, but when you're looking at a hard shell, you have a pop-up, a clamshell, or a hybrid uh, of both of the designs. It's just nice because you know, each person is different and you can really find something that fits your lifestyle um, perfectly. Whereas a soft shell, you're kind of boxed into one, um, one design. Uh, next, we're gonna be talking insulation. So hard shells definitely have the advantage here since most of the heat would escape through the roof of your tent. Um, insulation is going to be far better and the shell just helps out with this a lot. You know, some brands are better than others, but most, if not all, have some uh, level of insulation that they put into the shell itself. Uh, so that's definitely something to think about if you're looking at all season camping. Uh, next is wind resistance. Uh, you know, since uh, soft shells going to be all fabric, I mean, they're definitely sturdy. It can handle high winds, but you're going to hear a lot of the fabric flapping in the wind and a hard shell is usually going to be better for this again just because there's less fabric and the shell you can even point it if it's a clam shell you can point it in the direction of the wind and decrease that noise a lot uh, the other thing is looks so you know this might be a little superficial but it definitely plays into it some people care about how their rigs look a lot and a hard shell will definitely be the best for this as i mentioned earlier you can get like a six and a half seven inch uh, slim rooftop tent when they're closed 
and these things look really, really nice. And you can hardly notice they're there. They are very inconspicuous. To where soft, some soft shells can be, you know, 11, 13 inches thick, just really big up there. And you can definitely notice it. And um, on some rigs, it just might not look that great. Um, so if you, that's something you really care about, I would lean more towards hard shells. Uh, next is the driving capability of it. Uh, and this depends how you set the tent up, how low, prof low profile your rack is. Uh, but once again, hard shells are typically designed with an aerodynamic um, flow to it. So it'll just have less wind resistance and allow for a better drive and, and a more quiet one at that. Um, so if you, that's something you really care about, uh, you know, another factor to consider when looking to buy. Uh, a next thing uh, that I want to talk about is adding a roof rack onto your rooftop tent. And this has definitely been more and more adopted as um, the rooftop tent industry has developed. So I know a good example would be like the FSR Odyssey or even the uh, uh, X cover by iCamper. <laughs> Those are really good options. So you can essentially put a roof rack on top of your rooftop tent and haul along any gear you would like. I know a lot of rooftop tent campers like to do other hobbies when they go camping, you know, such as mountain biking, skiing, um, whatever it may be. This provides a really good way to haul that extra gear and because, you know, a rooftop tent often eats up all, if not a lot of the real estate on your vehicle. So this is a good way to kind of ba balance that out. Uh, another thing you can consider is adding a solar panel. Um, I, th I would say this is definitely for a more advanced camper or someone that just really wants the luxury and convenience of it. But hard shells, you can drill the solar panel directly into the, the shell of the tent and have it right there. And then some even have USB ports and 12 volt plugins. So if you wire the solar panel into the tent, then boom, you got electricity right into the tent. Um, another option is just to bring the solar panel along and you know not have it hooked up to the tent. Um, and you can still have electricity, but a lot of people prefer this and it's just a really convenient and you know hands-off design. If you guys have found this video helpful, please throw us a like or even a subscription. I come out with videos like this all the time on rooftop tents, uh, just super helpful and fun information. Uh, so please you know, follow along. It helps uh, spread the channel to other people and really just grow it and I would really appreciate it.